You didn't get a gift? Um... I call it the not special special, since, uh, you have no gift. Mm -hmm. If I was you, I'll be really sad. Well, my little friend, I am not. Because the truth is, gift or no gift, I am just as special as the rest of my family. Who wants more cake? All right, guys, where do I drop the wagon? Maybe your gift is being in denial. Hello, guys. Welcome to Kiss Closure for a fresh new perspective. Things you've never thought about, things you never will, and things you wish you never did. It's been a while since I visited my favorite classics of all time. I'm not going to lie, but I wish I could talk all day long about Chibli and so many other studios. But alas, the great demonetization, the takedown, and all that comes with it is just too much for my fragile soul. So why not Disney instead, while we think of ways to talk about all the others? There have been five key great movies this last decade, and I mean the non-remake, the non-catastrophe, the non-actual nightmare fuel, and sadly the non-big blockbusters as well. But still worth a lot to talk about. The darling favorite, Moana, the one that we can't stop singing and can't do. Of course there's Coco, a psychological horror in its own right. Don't worry, we'll get to that. Zootopia, just cause I was young and it got weird. And of course there's Luca, which to me is a musical masterpiece. Let's line them up from the worst to the best. Well, actually not the worst, but in this case, yeah, the worst to the best of the best. Beginning with, and yes, this hurts me too, Zootopia. Ah, what a wonder Zootopia was. It came and went and then came again for all the wrong reasons. But it was still such a bop of a film. The concept of humanoid creatures living together in a city is not new. In fact, I would say it may not be one of my favorite concepts unless it is done really right. In this world, a rabbit wants to be a police officer, which yes, I can hear you chuckling. I had a hearty chuckle too. That poor little buddy's gonna get eaten alive. It reminds me of the time I wanted to be a synchronized swimmer. I did it for a day, true story, but it was very hard. Still, it was a very funny day. Where were we? Oh yeah. Not all our desires actually pan out, but in this world, she gets the chance to, she's always wanted to prove to the world that even a bunny can become a cop. We also get to meet a fox who proves to the world that you shouldn't judge the covers by the books. I actually really like this story. I think it hits the right notes in many ways. The existential dread of who we really are meant to be in life and will the world accept that? I've struggled with this too, a lot. The whole idea of finding your dreams or your talents or what you're truly good at. We fall flat often and only 10% of the world truly ever get to realize their true potential. Whether it's cycling, fashion, cooking and even just being a synchronized swimmer. So we shouldn't give up because it might just be right within our grasp if we just give it another day. But the way the story falls flat for me is the whole humanoid animals. I get the idea that we're all different. So different that you could say one of us is a giraffe and another is a cheetah. But in one species, they all end up acting the same, which defeats the purpose of the message. All bunnies love carrots, all lions are dominant, all hamsters walk around like this, which is adorable, but a bit overselling of the message. In a world where anyone can be anything, it is sad to think that we are eventually going to be pigeonholed into one form of thinking, depending on how the world sees us. Of course, the movie tries to counteract this by saying not all predators are predators, but it's a bit narrow, I think. I say it is up to you in the end. What are you willing to be? But also, what can you be? And that is the question. To be or not to be, that is Sorry, the question. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean, y yes, I'm, yes, but... To be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> Next, we have Moana. And yes, it is a bit lower on this list, but I think there are some things it does great and others not so well. I would love if we could all just agree to go back to living this way. I know it will take some getting used to, but I can see myself sliding down a coconut tree and dancing with the locals. Make way, make way. This big city doors and this big city lives have taken away a lot of our curiosity. Moana gets to live that dream as the princess of an island nation, but there's something calling her beyond the sea, an adventure to which she knows not where. I'm reminded of stargazers, the first people to ever look at the skies and think, there must be worlds out there. But it's not that easy for her to go beyond the sea because there's a strange darkness that has taken over the world and anyone who ventures out to open sea often ends up dead, which means no voyaging. But she still braves her fears and goes out into the ocean. With the help of the ocean, 
the rock. You're welcome. And she becomes life itself or was life to begin with. Don't get me wrong. I love this movie. I love the songs. But I just wish we explored the world a lot more. I wish there was more to see in Moana. More to discover. I loved this ending that the true demon was you all along. It really puts into perspective how we should face our fears. In that, we are the barriers to our own lives. That means we can also be the solution to it. Conquering your fear means conquering your demons, which ultimately is you. And at the worst times, when you're struggling the most, you just have to stop listening to yourself and face your greatest weakness head on. This is not who you are. Next, we have Luca, and I believe this is a master of music. Luca El Gato! Imagine a world where summer isn't just a season, yeah! but a state of mind. Yeah, one of the greatest hits of the last decade. Where to begin? I love the music. Wait, I really say that. But for real, consider the music next time you watch it, and you may just be shocked at how good it is. It follows you, almost like a dancer taking you through a tango, and every so often, just so gracefully picking up the tempo. You can't keep up. But then again, it surprises you. It is a story about a maman who wants to go out to land. I find it sometimes odd that all these stories are about people who want to explore beyond their territories, what they were meant to be. It is a bit of a hook Disney keeps coming to. It's a bit strange for Luca because we never really get to see his world so we can make a comparison. I would say that the sea looks a lot better because the land is filled with scary people. But I see the story for what it is. It is largely a coming of age story in which you discover your passions and talents, being put in a position where you get to say, this is who I hope to be and I'm tired of worrying about what the world thinks of. The whole skin changing fits perfectly with this as we become almost new people overnight, having to think in a new way and we're treated in a new way and we discover the world in a new way. Air! <gasps> the sky, clouds, the sun. Whoa, don't look at it. My teenage years were rough, I must say. If it goes perfectly for you, then you grow into what you love most. If it doesn't, it will be rough, but you can still find a place that accepts you. There's a million things you think you can't do. All you need is a chance to try. And can't. This is still a bit recent and still very fresh in people's mind. Sometimes it surprises me how many great movies that were made during these times that are starting to get obscured and forgotten through the pages of history. We're starting to forget great classics. I think it's because there are just too many of them. What makes a story special at the end of the day is that there is none like it. But Disney may have discovered a formula during this period to keep making hits. But sadly, many of them will be forgotten for the classics of old. But if they made one good story every decade and not 10 million, these stories would never fade away. And as I say this, I can really hear the deep sighs you're all hitting me with right now because I know that will never happen. But imagine how special movies would be if we got one incredible story every decade. And Kanto felt something like that for a long while, and in many ways it still does. It is one of my favorite musical animations of the last decade, and I think it is the music that pulls you in. It is about Maribel, who lives in a family with great magical powers, and only she doesn't have one. This makes her the outcast of the family, the black sheep, the ginger-haired middle child. And to all gingers watching, I actually love that hair color. But yeah, Maribel is that ginger, and what's worse is that she could be destroying the magic in the family. Have you ever been in a room full of doctors, and you're sitting there listening to them talking about their degrees? Not just doctors, but also engineers, mathematicians, and the big brain careers like that. Most people who could be born will never be born, will never even exist. So the fact like that- Like sperm. As an, okay. I have. You feel worthless after a while if you're not a lawyer or a pilot or something fancy like that. So I love this story for reminding us the power of positivity and helping each other through the struggle of life. We rarely do this. We rarely do encourage each other. And we rarely do see our own potential. It has really become every man for themselves kind of world. But the next time you see someone down on their luck, why not encourage them a little? my girl because life itself now that is the gift and anyone still willing to face another day is the true hero
Lastly, we have Coco, which I believe is our final winner, the best of the Disney films that I've seen in the last decade. And also because I think there would be a riot somewhere online if Coco doesn't win. As an adult, when I watched it, it actually brought me to tears. And also makes me greatly worry about how we view the world. It is about a kid in a family that doesn't want anything to do with music, but he's a musician. Yes, this is another story about a contrarian, someone willing to go against the grain. But in this case, I don't mind it. I think it really fits when you put something as simple as music. Thing is, he is a beautiful player, so much so that I actually wanted to pick up a guitar and start learning to play. It brings you back to the simplicity of someone who truly loves their craft, who is truly in love with their talent. When you see that singer smile as they sing, or that dancer put in the practice for hours, there is something magical about watching someone do what they really love. Even YouTube, so subscribe. But yeah, he has to convince his family to let him play. Even the music caused his great-grandparents so much grief. Grief in which someone chooses their desires, their talents over everyone else. The thought that we must shine, even if it destroys our families, our friendships, or even our whole lives. I had to have faith in my dream. No one was going to hand it to me. It was up to me to reach for that dream, grab it tight, and make it come true. It is a tricky balance, having a passion and having a life. Those two things are not the same. I'm reminded of this horror, The Haunting of Bly Manor, where one of the characters takes care of a flower. But it is a flower that can only bloom one day in a year. I feel like most people see life that way, in that type of sense. I must bloom. I must bloom no matter what, even if it's just for one day in a year. But Coco reminds us that it is the memories we share that will always bloom for generations to come as he is given a chance to reunite his family beyond the grave and give the name Coco so much substance. A reminder that even as you share in what you love to do, remember to make memories with those around you and those truly last the test of time. Though I have to travel far, remember me. No photo on an ofrenda, no crossing the bridge. But I do have something to declare. I dread to imagine what we view life as if we must have money to survive in the land of the dead. Think about it. You're already dead and you still need money? It is haunting, pun intended. I think that no matter what fictional world we create at this point, we will always have the rich and the poor. Which is why I appreciate the lesson that the greatest wealth is not really wealth itself. It's your family, your friends, or even a great love you're hoping on. Because at the very least, a life of great memory is something anyone can make. Yes, yes, those are my five best films of the last decade. Hopefully, because I, I didn't look at the dates, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. I'm always looking to learn new things with you guys. An encouraging thought, or not, but one we need. So subscribe, like, share, and tell me your favorite film of all this. I really want to know which one hits that high note for you, and what great lesson you've taken from this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.